Hello there, Tony again. Today we have um, two lightning roosters. Um, one made by light, uh, Crystal Valve from back in the 30s, which were commonly used on the swir line system, single wire earth return. You can see when the power company's removed it, they've cut the wire here, so this here the, would have been mounted on the cross arm up that way. So that's cross arm mounted on like that. And then earth, straight to earth from here, rated 11,000 volts. So therefore if you get a lightning strike, the lightning will come down the line, it will come up through this connection here, it will jump across these spark gaps, these actually insulated spark gaps. It's and then through here which is filled with a substance called crystal valve, oh, crystal carb, uh, carbide crystals or something similar, silicon carbide sorry and then um, out to earth and straight into the ground and then when the lightning's passed then it will not allow the 11,000 volts to go through then we've got the later version which is made by the line material company in America which this one here was removed off a pole and then just dumped into the tide so I had a feeling they replaced some lightning roosters and left the old ones there I went and had a look and there that surely enough I found them, three of them too but one was broken. You can actually see the silicon carbide material in here. It looks like a dark grain, a sand type material. And also, same thing, you can make out those steel rods of the spark gaps. Looks like it's been used a bit. It's a bit smoky in this area, so. And from the same sort of era, we got two pole fuses. Now this is the way up they were mounted on the cross arm, so the cross arm was bolted up here and then the power was connected over to here, ran through the fuse, came out into the transformer. This one's a liquid liquid fuse. You can see it's got the fuse link up in here and then it's got a spring. So therefore when the fuse link breaks, the spring will retract into the liquid which will then isolate the supply and also quench the arc and up here it's got a vent expulsion vent so then when it operates now these are extremely rare now i think this is the only one that's around i have not seen one since on on the lines around here so it's not there the liquid was actually quite hazardous but i got the liquid cleaned out of it and it's actually i put diesel in it to make it look like the real thing. Then we got another one which is actually this one's a rewirable fuse. So therefore that you just unscrew the end caps and then three to wire through. These are commonly still used down the South Island in New Zealand. But um, I think they're pulling them out now anyway so whenever they can. Now when they stopped making these what they done was they pulled the fittings down, the bases the insulators here are made by bullers. If anyone, I have a feeling the whole unit's made in England, so if anyone in from England recognises it, it'll be nice to know the brand name of it. But when these were pulled down back in the 60s, what they've done is they take these clips off, and instead of having it hanging off the cross arm like that, they flipped it over like that, and then retrofitted it to a DDO, Dominion Dropout Fuse. So they attached these on. Now dropout fuses are called dropout fuses because when this wire here breaks it allows this to tip like that which will let the fuse drop out and hang like this. So then they can tell when the power is out in that transformer. They can some the newer ones have a reflector over here, as can be seen on that one. So um yeah. Uh, power board will drive along and they can see a fuse hanging down. There's two reasons. Also another reason why is as it drops out if it sticks in there what will happen is this carbonises and then it arcs through and this will burn through which I have seen as well when this seizes up and drop out hang down and then the power board can poke the stick up, hook it out and then bring it down and rewire it. As for those older ones they used to have a, a fuse stick that had a clamp which you twisted it and it clamped on and pulled them out. And then we got the goth 
DDO, Dominion Dropout Fuse, which is just a later version made in the 70s, made by EC Joff, Goff, which is down in Christchurch, New Zealand. So yeah, uh, volts 15,000, amps 100, 100 amp max. So there we go, also has the same, the same system. Drop out, hang down like that, and then the power board can come with the fuse stick and haul it out and replace this wire. So it's a matter of undoing these terminals, pulling the wire out, and putting a new one in. There's some old, more old equipment, which I'm currently restoring. Yeah. Nice old fuses, eh? And trouble with these things is I heard stories of the power company putting them in and if there's a cable fault or a transformer fault and then it expels all the gases out the top sometimes it expels this liquid out and you end up covering it and apparently it's not very safe liquid uh, It's a funny, got a funny name, it's Trek or something uh, Commonly used as dry cleaning fluid apparently so yeah Oh, that's us for today. Hope you guys enjoyed that.